What's going on, Vikings fans? This is Chris Corso here with offensive coordinator Gary Kubiak, who is learning how to use technology in this crazy time. How's it going? You've been coaching for 25 years in the NFL, and did you ever think you'd be holding these virtual meetings with your new players over over the computer? No, I, no, I didn't. But I will say this: you know, it's uh, it's amazing. Uh, how well the organization has done such a great job of setting this up. The players, players have been great. Uh, the coaches I have on the offensive side of the ball, I got some really bright young kids, you know, that can help us with all this technology and yet some veteran coaches, uh, that do a great job of teaching. So we're making it work and, uh, got off to a good start this week. Got three days under our belt. Got one more day this week, but it's been very positive. The reason why we wanted to get you on this call was because the number 22 draft pick for the Minnesota Vikings was Justin Jefferson out of LSU. And man, in that original call that, that we had on the Vikings platforms, we're able to see how excited you are. Um, you said he's well-versed in our offense already, coach, very competitive. And, and you said, yeah, this is really cool. So could you just describe those feelings and what you were feeling in that moment? Yeah, you know, uh, I know a lot of people that know the young man. Uh, some, there's a couple of coaches on the uh, LSU staff that work for me and have worked with me in the past. So had some insight from that standpoint, but I also know what type, what he was being asked to do offensively. You know, uh, he was basically used in a role at LSU, a lot like the receiver at, uh, at New Orleans, the one that's had so much success moving around and playing inside uh, the Thomas uh, receiver there Michael in New Thomas, Orleans. Yep. So, yeah, so when I would talk football with him, uh, it was so easy. The conversations were so easy, how, how they called plays, what he was being asked to do. So for us to have an opportunity for him to be in position for us to draft him uh, with us losing Stefan and, and, you know, looking for some immediate help from that standpoint. I, I know we're all excited as coaches, but I think we should all be excited in Minnesota because this, this young man has a, a chance to be a great player and, and the sooner the better for us. So I was able to speak to Andrew Janoko, the Vikings wide receiver coach, right after uh, we drafted Justin. And the first thing he said was, Justin's a winner, clearly, uh, mm -hmm. national champion. You're a winner. Seven Super Bowls as a player and a coach. I mean, com combine those two. I, I'm pretty excited for what's to come for the Vikings offense. Well, hopefully there's some more winning coming, you know. But, uh, no, you know, the first thing that jumps at you is you don't catch 111 balls in a season, be it pro football or college football, unless you're a very bright player. And as a receiver, to do that, you have to have the ability to move around. You watch them play, he'd be in the backfield one snap, he'd be in the slot a bunch, which we all know that. A lot of movement with him. Uh, the year before he played outside a lot. So, you know, those, those are the things that really get you excited as a football coach moving forward. He's very competitive. He came up the hard way. It wasn't easy for him if you read his story. Uh, he's kind of been a, an overachiever type his whole career and uh, just kind of plays with a chip on his shoulder. You won't see this kid run out of bounds many times. He challenges people. Uh, very competitive uh, nature on the field, you know, talking, competing with the, and he's played against the best and played some of his biggest games against the best. So, you know, that's very encouraging. 109 of his 111 receptions came in the slot. Um, do you see him playing in the slot in the NFL, or can he can he do both? I mean, I think he could do both. Yeah, you know, I I just I think that's our job. You know, guys say he's a slot player. He's this. You know, we got to do what he does best. And obviously, him moving inside and doing a lot of those things uh, was a big positive for him. I think he has the ability to play wherever we ask him to play. But you know, we can we can move guys by how we call formations. We don't necessarily have to say you're a slot player. I mean, yep. he, he'll go out there and, and operate where Diggsy just left. He'll work at X as he learns our offense and stuff. But as I start to call plays and do those type of things, obviously I'm going to put him in the positions uh, he's most comfortable and where I think he does his best work. So uh, that's that's all I have on, on Justin. But going with the next guy, Ezra Cleveland, I mean, this guy is just someone that seems to fit right into your zone blocking scheme. He's 6'6", 311 pounds, and he ran a 493 yeah. at the combine in the 40-yard dash. What is it about this young man that really stood out to you guys? I know Coach Zimmer had to get his cornerback with that second <laughs> first-round pick, but I mean, then we go with the, with the big offensive lineman. I, I mean, you gotta only love this kid. 
Well, two things jump out. He's a really good athlete. Obviously, he's a big man, but he's a really good athlete. He's very bright. So, you know, that's the type of guys we've had a lot of success with in our scheme. Uh, you know, with Ezra, we're going to we're gonna work with him doing a lot of things, you know, working at tackle. We're going to ask him to move inside and work at guard. We're going we're gonna to play our best five guys. So he makes us very competitive the minute he walks in the building. But, but his brain, his football brain, gives us the ability – to do a lot of things with him and then settle him down where we feel best, you know, from that standpoint. Uh, but, uh, you know, three-year starter, uh, done it with some very good offensive football teams. Uh, you know, we're going to ask you to run and get to the second level, do all those type of things, and naturally you got to be able to pass protect in our in our league. Uh, but Ezra will catch up very quickly. We've spent a few days with him already just kind of talking to him and those type of things, and it's very, very clear to us that this kid could be a quick study for us moving forward. Do you realize how happy you made Alexander Madison when you drafted Ezra? Yeah, well, you know what? We actually asked uh, Matt a, a bunch about Ezra. You know, that's one of the positive you, you use as coaches in the draft. You know, when uh, one of the guys that you work with every day and you have a, a you know a high opinion of him like we do of Matt, we call Matt, tell us about Ezra, tell us about what type of worker he is, what type of kid he is. You know, when Matt stands up for him, you know, that says a lot. So we definitely use that tool before we made this decision right there. So, you know, it makes us very excited to have Ezra in the fold. So you get these two big time draft picks, but you were able to get six on offense compared to the full uh, the, the nine on defense out of the full 15. Um, going down the list here, we have a couple other playmakers, a developmental quarterback who, who you really like. So I'll start out with K.J. Osborne who was a big-time playmaker at the University of Buffalo and then um, obviously had that amazing season at the University of Miami. He's a he's a pass catcher, but he could also help on special teams. Do you see him doing a little bit of both next year? Yeah, you know, one of the first things that jumped at me about KJ is uh, in the draft, there were a few players that were grad transfers, guys that, you know, had a good career somewhere, graduated, transferred to a, a particular school, and then it was it was like, okay, how'd they do? Well, this kid went from Buffalo to the University of Miami. We all know about Miami's program through the years. He walks in there. He becomes a leader on their football team. He's very, very productive in what they did. He's a great special teams player and returner. So that says, number one, he has a lot of character, you know, because that, that's not that's not easy to do. So when I watch him play, I just think there's a big upside here. I think offensively we can uh, – kind of uh, maybe bring about some more of his talents and what and what we ask him to do as a receiver. But I think he's definitely going to help our team and help move uh, from a return standpoint. So I see upside here. I think we're very fortunate to get him. I really like what he stands for as a person uh, because that never changes when guys come into our league. And I think that gives them a chance to be a, 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 real, a real pro very quickly. Um, going down the list, uh, Blake Brandell, who's a player out of Oregon State, Another large human being um, pretty much played every single game that was played as a Beaver at Oregon State there. Um, he had a record for, for the amount of games consecutively he played for that school. So what do you see out of this guy? When I, when I spoke to him, the first thing he said was, I'm ready for this zone blocking. Like he knew everything about our scheme before, before he was like even had a second to catch his breath. Well, first thing that jumps at you, he starts four years, uh, you know, at left tackle. I think I think, 50-plus uh, starts, I want to say like 47 of them are at left tackle. Obviously in a great conference in college football, so he's blocking good people on a week-in and week-out basis. He's got the size that you need to play in our league. He's very bright, just like Ezra. I mean, test score great, uh, football brain, very good when we visit with him. So once again, here, here we get a guy who's got all the ability, all the brain to come in here and be a part of our competition up front. And uh, he's done it against some good people. So we'll see what happens. But Blake's a nice addition to our football team and very fortunate to get a player of that caliber very late in the draft. Rounding it out here, the Vikings took a quarterback for the first time since 2014 um, in the draft. And it was a familiar face in the Big Ten, Nate Stanley, who played at the University of Iowa. And one thing that stuck out to me is that it was uh, pretty much put out there that, that you had spoken to him pre prior to the draft that, that the Vikings were interested in him and, and the scheme at Iowa, was, Iowa would also help um, him develop into a quarterback with the Vikings. Yeah, you know, I know Iowa's program very good and uh, seemed like every player I've, I've had come play for me that I've gotten out of that school, 
uh, I don't know, there's something special about them. They, they, they catch up to speed very quickly. You're going to get everything they have. You know, obviously, I, I talked to Nate quite a bit. Uh, the first thing that jumps at me is he's a winner. I mean, he's won a lot of football games. I think he's 3-0 and in his bowl games as a quarterback. Uh, I think I'm right on that. But in big games, he finds a way. And, you know, as a, as a coach for Clinton and I to go to work, you know, he comes in our room with Kurt and Sean and Jake. Uh, he fits right in from a personality standpoint, uh, from a winner in college standpoint, which all them guys were. And uh, he'll be he'll be a very quick study, very bright in what they're doing. I, uh, Coach Ferentz, I know his program very well. I know how he teaches. I know what he expects of his players. Uh, the way they call things offensively is much like the way I, I run my offense. So I think we can make up a lot of ground right here with him. So very fortunate. I mean, you're sitting there in the seventh round. A lot of people chasing him if he wasn't going to get drafted. The fact that Rick had all these extra picks there late in the draft is the reason we end up with this young man. Yeah, and finishing off, we took we were one of the two teams, three teams to take a Division II slash Division III player in Kyle Hinton at a Washburn University. He's another player who had um, said that he had some some discussions with the Vikings since November. Um, what did you see in this small school player? He's, he's a he's a huge guy as well, 310 pounds. Um, what did you see out of him? Well, Rico and uh, Phil had a lot of conversations with him as we prepared for the draft. Uh, talked to him. You know, obviously he played tackle, right? So everybody, I think everybody would know that by now. But he was a tackle at his school, uh, but but undersized for that position in our league. But for him to move inside, that's going to be easy. So. Uh, we believe a lot in moving players from outside in when we think they have the athletic ability to do that. Uh, so we're going to actually start him off at center. That's the way we're going to work with him. Uh, he's going to get to get behind Garrett and get behind Jonesy and learn a lot of good football from them. So uh, we'll take it slow right here because we're asking a lot of him, but we know we've got a very good athlete who is very successful at his level, and we're going to try to make him fit at our level. So I just have to commend you for getting six picks on offense out of the 15 from Coach Zimmer. What was that like? <laughs> well, I, I know Coach had a lot of holes to fill, but uh, Zim's always more than fair. He just wants to have a good football team. And, uh, you know, I love working for him. And we were visiting this morning. You know, he's uh, we're sitting here teaching, uh, you know, through, through the virtual teaching. And Zim's popping in and out of our meetings. He's in our quarterback meeting this morning. We're talking a little football. But, uh can't wait to get back and get back in that office and get our hands on all these good young draft picks we have and get ready for 2020.